Today has been completely strange when you consider the fact that Xbox is starting to reveal their master plan and how they want to try and beat the PlayStation 5. And while I think it's good, I'm curious if it's going to work. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. And just a bit ago, I just finished watching the Xbox Roundtable, where they basically spent an hour talking to the developers over at Bethesda about this upcoming acquisition. The fact that now Bethesda is 100% completely owned by Microsoft. And the reason they did this is almost as a way of trying to calm down the fans. A lot of the things the developers were saying was lots of stuff about, oh, this isn't a big deal. Yes, they technically own our game engines, our ideas, our games, our IP, everything's going to be on Games Pass, but it felt like they were spending a lot of time just basically going, this will only be good for Xbox gamers. Now I want to talk about the idea of exclusives and what I think the grander implications of this in a war against PlayStation, because let's face it, there is still a little bit of a console war, and right now, the biggest weapon in the console war in behalf of Sony is momentum. The PlayStation 4 was such a crazy overwhelming success that a lot of people jumped straight from PS4 to PS5 because it carried over their games library, a lot of their games, their save files. A lot of people are currently trying to get a PlayStation 5, mostly to some degree because they had a PlayStation 4. I'm glad I own both, but I still love my PlayStation 5 a little bit more. But it seems like what Xbox is trying to do is basically say, it's time to take us seriously. So let's begin actually by listening to this statement that was just released. This is part of the Bethesda Game Showcase, where it's now pretty much confirmed that Microsoft is going to be putting everything as an Xbox and PC exclusive going forward. Like, literally, if there's not a contract in place, it's going to be an exclusive. But let's check out this clip right here. So this is obviously the chief of Xbox, Phil Spencer. He's the guy who's kind of in charge with what games go where, what deals are done, and who gets bought. Well, I, I, let's let just him talk for a sec. I'm going to try to be as clear as I can, because uh, I, I, that's what I, I, I just think it's fair. So obviously I can't sit here and say every Bethesda game is exclusive, because we know that's not true. There's contractual obligations that we're going to see through, as we always do in every one of these instances. Pause. So here, real quick, it's just quick to point this out. Legally, he has to say this. Phil Spencer is not just being placating. He's not being vague. There are actually certain games that Bethesda has already sold exclusive contracts for. Things like Deathloop. Deathloop, this is going to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive for quite a while. And straight up, legally, they can't stop this deal. This is already finished. It's already done. It's coming out here in a couple weeks. Legally, they can't change things up. But the grander implications of this is basically starts hinting at what's coming next. Here's Phil again. We have games that exist on other platforms, and we're going to go support those games um, on the platforms they're on. There's communities of players. We love those communities, and we'll continue to invest in them. And even in the future, there might be things that have either contractual things or legacy on different platforms that we'll go do. But if we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. All right. Did you get that? Did you fully absorb the information? Basically... I think that this is a very, very good statement. I think he's managing to really kind of establish the point very importantly, which is basically what they're saying is, if you're already loving Xbox games, if you're already loving Microsoft properties that happen to be on the PlayStation 5, like specifically think of something like Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited, this is still on the PlayStation, this is still on PC, this is still all over the place, and it's still getting lots of expansions and updates and huge chunks of content, this is now technically an Xbox game. Yes, not directly, but it is a Microsoft property. And they're basically saying, we're not going to be pulling things off of other stores. Instead, you can keep giving us your money anywhere you want. It is just future content that's coming to the Xbox. 
Now, a major focus of this presentation in general was definitely just the idea of Games Pass. In fact, even during it, they announced that another 20 games are coming to Games Pass tomorrow. Everything from Wolfenstein to freaking Morrowind, which I love a bunch, Doom, everything is coming to Games Pass. And now it sounds like everything is going to be coming to Games Pass going forward. So every single game that was going to be on Xbox, every Bethesda thing, is now going to be part of the Games Pass subscription. And I think that this is part of their power move. Now let's kind of just sort of spell this out. Why I think that this is such a dangerous gamble, but I think it might work. So I bought a PlayStation 3 a couple months after launch, way back in the day, and some of you may not remember this, but very early on, the freaking Xbox 360 was a juggernaut. Last generation, or I guess two generations ago now, the Xbox 360 was incredibly powerful. Things like Halo and Call of Duty, at least shooters and stuff, were kind of getting that mainstream appeal. And additionally, this was a time period where very, very fast internet was accessible for the first time very, very easily. So people were actually going and spending a ton of hours, but more specifically on Xbox. The PlayStation 3 was definitely at a disadvantage until nearly the end of the generation. This is a well-documented thing, but it was interesting being there at the start of the PlayStation 3 because there wasn't much to play. At the very start, honestly, the main thing I did on my PlayStation 3 was play PS1 games. I mean, seriously, it was kind of just this device that didn't have a huge catalog, but the games that did come to PlayStation 3 looked fantastic. But instead, Instead of giving up, instead of just Sony trying to pack it in or start to make deals, they decided to start creating their own first party stuff that was mind blowing. Think about the fact that Uncharted. Uncharted is now considered to be one of the best freaking adventure games of all time, and I definitely agree with that sentiment. And that started on the PlayStation 3. We got the original trilogy of Uncharted games back to back, and they were freaking fantastic. Or even consider something like Killzone or The Last of Us, games that managed to kind of change the nature of storytelling and how we kind of view first party exclusive content. And here is my thought. A lot of those games got momentum over the course of the generation. This was not some like instantaneous deal. They weren't able to just snap their fingers and instantly have a hundred million PlayStations sold. But instead, they played the long game. They realized, okay, everybody is obsessed with the Xbox 360 right now. The Xbox 360 has all the big exclusives, the fun games, the online communities. How can we compete with that? And they basically said, we can buy our way to the top. We can find cheap developers. We can pay them a proper wage. We can make sure that we get all their best art. Now, here's my thoughts. I do think that basically what Microsoft may be planning is to completely take over the freaking internet, take over the world in two or three years. This isn't going to be an instantaneous acquisition, but part of the interesting intricacies of this, part of this I feel like is not being taken seriously enough, is the fact that Bethesda, because they're now so fully owned, all their stuff can be traded around, including their employees, which means that theoretically, I love Doom Eternal, I think Doom Eternal is fantastic, Legally, they could take the huge chunk of Doom Eternal team. What if they made the next Halo? What if they decide to grab a bunch of people that made Dishonored or Deathloop? Imagine if they took them and made a gritty, realistic spin-off or something like Fable. Like, the potential of this is crazy, but I feel like the grander implications of this are still not fully set. It seems like Xbox's like master plan here is basically the fact that, if you consider it, PlayStation 5 is currently dominating console sales. If you look at the numbers, it seems like pretty much every single PlayStation 5 that even just goes on a store place is sold out in milliseconds. It's very difficult to get it. I read the comments section, I see you guys saying, where the hell are the PS5s? I wish I knew. And part of this is people getting ready to line up for the theoretical exclusives coming soon. Stuff like Ratchet and Clank, God of War, all the games that are probably in development, like Last of Us Part 3 or whatever. People are getting ready for the future of PlayStation. People are getting ready for the idea of the rumored Silent Hill reboot and stuff. Part of a console jumping onto a generation early is an investment. You're buying some very expensive tech for the games that are going to exist down the road. And it feels like what Microsoft is doing now is they're basically saying, invest in us. Get ready for the future of Games Pass. This is not just about systems sold. This isn't about the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S. This is about the power of Xbox. And it's a gamble that I think might work. 
but I guess we're going to find out. This is still a gigantic question mark. I'm glad I watched this hour-long press conference because it was definitely uh, very, very interesting, uh, but it was a bit boring in times. If I could just be brutally honest here for a second, look, if you're doing a roundtable discussion about really deep investor difficulties and contracts obligations and developer hype and engine contracts, don't do that at a noon on a random Thursday. I don't know. This was a very strange tone, but I can definitely feel the excitement. These guys definitely got paid out the butt by freaking Microsoft. But let's see what it actually turns into. Will this turn into bigger and better games or just a lot of fluff and not enough products? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below because this has been another freaking gaming rant by Dreamcast Guy. I got some reviews coming up next week that are going to be very, very fun. I am working on something with Monster Hunter Rise and all this is going to be absolutely delicious. Thanks so much for watching gamers. Please give this video a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do be the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.